Today I'm going to go through all my Alaska hunting gear. I just returned home from two months in the bush. And so I'm going to go through, this is going to be pretty close to comprehensive, might be missing a few things. Um, but I'm going to go through everything that I use and how I pack to travel on the airlines. So what I'm, what I'm unpacking here lasts me for two, even to three months. So if you're going on a DIY hunt or a guided hunt, this is going to be plenty to last you, um, you know, for 10 days or two weeks, whatever. So I'm going to try to talk a little bit about each item. I don't want to get too long-winded, but try to give you just a rough overview of what I've figured out works for me in the last 23 years of guiding in Alaska. First thing I'm going to start with that I didn't bring with me this year that I didn't need is footwear in hip boots. Um, these are just standard lacrosse hip boots. Uh, everybody's probably pretty familiar with those. Uh, if you're going on a moose hunt, caribou hunt, if you're working in and out of a boat, you're probably going to want those. Maybe some breathable waist waders or chest waders. All depends on where you're hunting. Another thing that's real handy, these are called Neo Air or Wiggy, or uh, excuse me, sourdough slippers. They sell them at Barney's Sports Chalet in Anchorage. These are pretty heavy duty nylon with some grip on the bottom. These actually slip on over your hunting boots so you pack them with you. But if you need to be in them for pro prolonged periods of time, they work pretty handy. So if you're in and out of float planes and that's about all you're gonna need them for, these are pretty slick. These weigh about two pounds. The hip boots are probably about four or five. Hip boots really aren't so much packable. These are packable. Uh, I'm gonna show you some Wiggy's waders here in a little bit, which are the ultralight version, which is all I brought with me this year because it was all that I needed. Um, one thing that I left behind that I have here at home, but I didn't have packed with me because I threw it away when I was done with the end of the season, is a bone saw. What I use is just a small carpenter saw. They're, I don't know, 12, 15 bucks. I'll usually get a season or two out of them. I find that they're a lot uh, more versatile than, let's like, say, a Wyoming saw. They're a lot more heavy duty and easier to use than one of those flip open hand saws. And, you know, they're real, they're real thin, obviously. Usually I'll, uh, I'll take any rubber or excess weight off of them, so they're very lightweight. But these are heavy duty and they'll last a long time. Definitely the best that I've used for the last 10 years is basically all I've used. When I'm sheep hunting, I actually just bring a, a hacksaw blade and uh, put a little piece of duct tape at the end and work it in reverse. And then that's all I use to cut the skull of a sheep. That works pretty good. Usually only get one sheep skull per, uh, per sheep, or per blade rather. So what I do when I pack is on the airlines they're going to allow you two 50 pound bags. Well actually you got to pay for bags nowadays uh, all the way around. But I can get everything that I need in two 50 pound bags and a carry on. So with my gun case uh, I take out all the padding and then I stuff all my clothes around my rifle and my pistol. So one thing to start, here's some down puffy pants. These zip all the way up and down the sides which are uh, basically, in my opinion, they're an essential item in Alaska anymore. You can get to your glassing knob and then you put these on, you glass all day, uh, you can put rain gear over them, but when you find that animal you want to go after, zip zip down either side, stuff them in your pack, and you're off and running. These are a must have for sure. Heavy duty glassing gloves, uh, these are by Kuyu, these, these are good. Um, long uh, gauntlets or wrists are very important. Um, if you're going in real cold weather, probably mittens are going to be better off for you. Some of those expedition type gloves are great, but definitely get the long wrists. This is a hat, I actually had a hunter give me here this fall. I was kind of eyeballing it and all I had was just my little beanie and uh, he gave it to me, but boy this sucker is nice and warm. Um, pretty self explanatory there. A pair of gaiters I think are a must. Uh, these are katana uh, gaiters by, uh, by Kuyu, probably the Yukon gaiters I prefer. These are a little bit short uh, for me, but they work all right. Everything against my skin is wool. Wool t-shirt, uh, this is actually, this is a synthetic, uh, real short long underwear, basically go right below the knees. This is all I use for the entire sheep, grizzly bear, caribou, 
uh, shot a wolf uh, and moose season. So these zip up and down the sides. Again, I really like those because they're easy on and off. You don't have to take your boots off. Uh, ammunition, I won't get too much into that too much. I mean, obviously my rifle's for stopping bears. Um, I'm not a fan of burger bullets. Um, I, I just had pretty poor experience with them. A lot of guys are a lot more, uh, uh, they're becoming very popular. I know they're very accurate. Um, for bears, I like Barnes Triple Shock, a whole bunch. Acubon bullets are good. Um, Nosler Partition bullets are good. Um, I, I won't get into that too much here, but pretty much one 20 round box of ammo is all you're gonna need. I've got my pistol ammo here. Trekking poles, I consider them to be a must unless you're in brushy country and doing very little walking, just hunting in and out of a boat. You maybe won't need them. I uh, broke one here and had to make a little bush salvage repair, but I tend to like aluminum rather than carbon. Um, just had a guy, two guys broke carbon poles this year. They just have a tendency to break a lot easier. Obviously, you can still break and bend the aluminum, but usually they're more salvageable if something goes wrong with those. So I've got a, this is a Ruger 375 because I lost my Winchester uh, 375 on a, a river crossing last year. Kind of a long story, but I won't get into that one right now. But I just pack my rifle basically like this, stick the action in a sock. Uh, my scope, I've got detachable scope mounts. Um, but yeah, you can just fit that right amongst all your, your uh, clothing. And I put my scope, I've got my scope in this sock, this set of socks here. As far as socks go, I think I brought like six pairs. I didn't even wear them all. Uh, granted, I was able to wash them halfway through the season. But I like wools, at least wool blends. I also like uh, sock liners. Um, particularly for sheep hunting when I'm doing a lot of hiking they seem to work pretty good for me. Havilon knives those are real popular nowadays uh, kind of a must-have. All I use is just this Victory Knox with a homemade just a cardboard sheath. You can see it's nice and clean. Um, this is what I use it's a boning saw it's a little bit stiffer than a fillet knife but for skinning bears, butchering moose if I'm sheep hunting, all I bring with me is this, and then I've got a multi-tool, a Leatherman in here, right here actually. If you're going on a guided hunt, all I would probably bring is a multi-tool. Your guide's gonna have the knives, all that he needs. Carbide sharpener, which I'm due for a new one. That thing's about worn out. Uh, here's my Leatherman. Like I said, if you're going on a guided hunt, this is pro you're not gonna need anything more than that. Uh, 44 pistol, I have a pistol 44. It's a Scandium Titanium by Smith & Wesson. Uh, I like it, nice and lightweight. Um, more guys are going to 10 millimeters nowadays. Again, if you're going on a guided hunt, probably just bring your rifle, assuming you're a rifle hunter. If you're a bow hunter, probably bring a pistol. Um, but I don't think you need both. I bring both, because when I'm sheep hunting, I don't carry a rifle. You know, or if I'm uh, moose hunting and we kill out, I'll bring the pistol with me if we're packing. <clears throat> so I'll bring, I'll wear a pair of, of uh, wool underwear with me when I'm traveling. So when I'm traveling, I'll wear an outfit maybe like this, but something that I could also wear hunting in case one of my bags gets lost uh, for a couple of days. So I'll, I'll wear a pair of underwear, obviously, and then I'll bring two more. And that, that'll last me for two months if need be, but usually I'm able to wash them. Uh, in between, so that'll get me by for a month. I, I think even most hunters m maybe are going to change their underwear once during a hunt, you know, if you get really wet or whatever, but you usually need a lot less than you think because you're going to stink no matter what. The biggest thing is just having dry clothes. So I'll bring two wool t-shirts and then uh, maybe one or two long sleeve wool shirts. Here's just a long uh, wool, long sleeve wool hoodie. Here's a more heavy, a little bit thicker fleece hoodie, which I wear all the time. I like this thing. It's kind of durable. The wool tends to snag a little bit more where this is a little bit tougher. So I wear this quite a bit. Here's one of my long sleeve, uh, yeah, but this is, I believe this is wool. This might be a little bit of, uh, this might be some polyester here. 
but either way, I like the long sleeve shirts, particularly when it's hot and sunny. Uh, yeah, it's merino wool, lightweight uh, Kuyu new yarn merino wool. Um, when it's real sunny, I, I actually kind of prefer having just that long sleeve um, shirt on to protect me from the sun a little bit. So I'll, other than the pants I wear um, on the airplane, I'll just bring two other pair of pants with me. One light, one heavy. This is my lightweight pant. I believe this is the Katana. This is a foot care kit, which I didn't use, but handy to have. Another item that I think is a must have is just this camp chair. Works as obviously good for padding in the uh, gun case. So just a camp chair. If you're gonna do a lot of sitting and glassing, this is pretty invaluable. Uh, saves on the back. Um, real handy piece of equipment. And this case itself, just an aluminum job. I don't even know if it's got a brand to it. Uh, I've had it for a bunch of years. Seems to be holding up pretty well. But Pelican, uh, there's a bunch of good cases out there. I don't need to get too much into that. Um, I guess next we'll go with my pack. This is the uh, uh, Kuyu Pro 7800. I like the big pack, you know, for guiding. You kind of got to have it. If you're going on a guided hunt, any type of guided hunt, I would say go with at least 45 cubic inches, probably 5,000 is more like it because, you know, just to handle bulk and it's better to have it a little bit too big. You're not adding that much weight. Uh, if you're going, uh, you know, hiking to a glassing knob and then you're sitting all day, you're going to need a lot of clothes. So you'll fill that pack quicker than you think. So water bottle, I don't use the filter water bottles. Um, can if you want. Most of the country that I'm in, I'm always trying to find springs. Like where I sheep hunt, we, we drink all that water. And even if I'm moose hunting or places where giardia is more prevalent, I'm usually able to find springs. Um, but we'll have uh, filters in our kits, water treatment available. And then the, the filter water bottles, you just, if you got a filter built into it, it just doesn't carry as much water. And it's just a little extra added weight. So here I've got a small dry bag, I don't know what this, 13 liters I guess. This is a little bit on the small side. I would pack basically most of your gear or have readily available 20 to 30 liter dry bags to pack your gear, particularly if you're going in and out of Super Cubs. That's handy because then you can break it down and then the pilot can stuff things a lot easier. I'm just a cheap, broke guide so I use Ziplocs and trash bags for a lot of my stuff. This I call my possibilities bag, just oddball things, lens cleaners, some tape, extra batteries, earplugs, a pen, blister kit, some uh, medications, uh, anti-inflammatories, some sunscreen, uh, tape measure, a few extra buckles for my pack, things like that. A baseball cap, which I should probably put in my head now, hide my mop. Um, Bug dope, just a small little thing here. That's about all I bring and not, it'll last me for several seasons. I uh, like some energy drinks, emergencies as a wilderness athlete, uh, mountain ops, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Um, a big thing is just electrolytes. You know, having electrolytes handy, I find is uh, pretty critical. Particularly, uh, you're doing a lot of hiking, you might find muscles that you've never really worked before. So I'd bring a bunch of those and bring maybe some snack food with you if you there's some kind of energy bar or snack food that you really like. You're going on a guided hunt, they should be providing you with food, but I would bring a little something of what you like and what you're used to. If you like good coffee, you know, bring some coffee with you. Um, but I would keep that down probably under five pounds. Sleeping bag, get a stuff sack, a good one. That'll protect it, obviously. One trick that I've found over the years that works well for me, I don't have it in here now, it's just my sleeping bag because when I came home I brought some moose meat and some sheep meat and I actually froze it, putting it in my sleeping bag. Traveled for a day and a half, almost two days before I got home and that meat was still partially frozen in here. But when I go up, I'll put my sleeping pad in this, I will put my headlamp, my toothbrush, and a book 
all in this one um, case and that's handy because I never know where I'm going to end up at night. Everything I need at night and to lay down and sleep is in one stuff sack. That's worked out really handy for me over the years so that's, a, that's something I'd highly recommend. This is just a lightweight fleece jacket. Pretty handy. I actually travel with this. I wore it up. A uh, neck gaiter. Uh, merino wool neck gaiter, very thin, lightweight, must have for sure. Uh, here's my rain jacket. Went with katana this year, really like it. Uh, this is a heavy, fairly heavy, uh, what do we got here? Super Down Pro jacket, basically windproof. I, I stuff this, keep it in my pack at all times. This is kind of the jacket that I wear once I get to wherever. I'm sitting and uh, for a period of time, this is kind of my last layer that I put on. Stuff's down to nothing. Gotta have something like this. Uh, this is a soft shell jacket. To be honest, I don't wear this a whole bunch. I wear this more around camp. Again, a more durable layer when I'm doing stuff in base camp or, uh, you know, where these, these puffy layers, I wear them almost exclusively for my outer layers when I'm hunting, but they have a tendency to snag and rip very easily. So a soft shell layer is pretty handy, but I don't wear that a lot. I will bring two pairs of hunting boots with me. Here's a pair of Krispies, um, and I always stuff them full of stuff. Um, so I bring my own coffee cup too. Uh, that's pretty handy. One thing I'd recommend is having one with a wide bottom because you're always setting it on uneven terrain. And so that's kind of nice, keeps it stable. We've got a couple lighters in here, um, some more uh, leftover wilderness athlete stuff. I'd recommend um, get, having some good insoles. That's one thing, a mistake that I've made over the years. I used to wear extra tufts all the time with no arch support. And over time, that's kind of wore my uh, smash the arches of my feet down from packing heavy loads for so long. So I, I'm a real big believer in arch supports these days. So I'd probably find something other than, you know, your factory arch support. Um, we'll come back to this. Try to stick with boots now. So these are the Crispy Hunter boots, which I liked. Um, Crispy also makes a, a guide. No, these are the yeah, these are the guide boots. I like them. They also make the hunter boot, which I really like. Uh, another water bottle, just got a new one here. I got a uh, predator call in there, a lightweight pair of gloves, some emergency packets that were left over. Here's my rain pants. Again, the Katana rain gear, very good for the weight. Guess we're done with the crispy boots. Uh, the other pair of boots that I bought or brought with me is uh, Lathrop and Sons. Got them in a trash bag, obviously. Uh, these were nice. I had really good luck with them. They come with a Lathrop and Sons deal. is all about a, a custom fit, a custom insole. You can buy just the boots if you want as well. Um, but I did like these. The only thing I would change about them, I would probably go with some higher top ones. That's just me. I know a lot of guys like the shorter ones to save some weight. Got an extra pair of socks in there. But these boots worked good for me. And I would bring, even if you're a guided hunter, is bring an extra trash bag with you or a compactor bag. Just stuff it in there. It weighs nothing. Works as a makeshift dry bag. You can put meat in it. Um, it just all sorts of uses. So I would probably bring two heavy duty, like big uh, commercial grade or contractor grade trash bags with you, or at a minimum, like a 30 gallon, couple 30 gallon compactor bags. Handy to have. Uh, so here I've got, now there's some tent stakes in here for my fly. But this, this is my fly here. This is a 10 foot tarp. So it basically just has guy lines on the corners and the sides. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll see that I sit under these things all the time. If you're a DIY hunter, gotta have one of these. They're slick to have in your pack. You set up as a shelter to glass under. You maybe cover your meat with it. Uh, you get an animal, um, weighs, I don't know, two pounds maybe. And even if you're going on a guided hunt, 
I wouldn't really hesitate to bring this thing along. If your guide doesn't have one, which I know a lot of guides, they're tougher than I am. They just sit out in that stuff all day. Uh, I've been using a tarp for basically as long as I've been guiding and I just can't imagine hunting without it. So I'd say this is a must have item. Maybe check with the guide you're going with, see if they have one. Um, but yeah, that thing is worth its weight in gold. This is a Seek Outside teepee. It's a six man. I use it as my spike out shelter when I'm sheep hunting. Stands about seven foot tall in the center, spreads out, gosh, I don't know, 10 feet probably, 10, 12 foot circle. Three guys easy can fit in it in their gear. Um, I don't know what it weighs, six, seven pounds, but I, I love this thing. This has worked out really, really well for me. But Hilleberg tents are good. Um, Kuyu tents, been hearing pretty good things about them now. I think they're about second or third generation on those now. Uh, there's a lot of good tents out there. I uh, always keep my first aid, my guide license, hunting license, you know, basically my first aid kit, I didn't even have, I haven't even had band-aids in it for years. Consists of moleskin and those um, kind of like silicone-like blister pads, batteries, a couple extra scalpel blades, um, neosporin, and honestly, the biggest thing that I use, if it's anything major, is going to be athletic tape, you know, to wrap something up. Um, a few uh, pills of various sorts. I've got some heavy-duty antibiotics that I bring with me just in case. Uh, i got a jet boil here. Again, if you're going on a guided hunt, probably won't need that. Um, MSR makes a reactor stove that works pretty well. And I've got another pair of socks stuffed in here to more or less to keep it from rattling. Uh, and by the way, I really like this pack. I've, uh, I've used Barney's packs for many years. Those are about bomb proof. Those are kind of an Alaska standard pack. I like that frame for hauling heavy loads, particularly external loads, antlers and meat. If you're going on a DIY caribou or moose hunt, uh, pack frame is a really handy thing to have. You know, if you know you're going to be doing lots of packing, um, they're very nice. Uh, but I really do like this pack. I ran a stone glacier for about three or four years. I like that. Very lightweight. Probably the biggest advantage that I've seen over the Kuyu pack for me as a guide. More easily accessible external pockets, which I kind of like. Um, yeah, that just seems to work well for me that I can access things more quickly. That's my wife's dog. Try not to claim him. He's actually barking at my compactor bag that blew away. I had a Labrador. He's not a, not a real manly uh, pet here, but I had a Lab, but he passed away on me this fall, or this summer. He was 14 years old. He was a good old dog. But uh, anyways, um, here's just a gun carrier for this pack. Here's the Wiggies waders that I was telling you about. They're just nylon over boots, basically. Uh, they wear like hip boots. They're essentially just good for crossing creeks. They're probably going to only last four or five, maybe a dozen creek crossings, and then you'll start poking holes in them. So you're not going to be able to use them for any extended period of time. But it, let's say you've got one creek you need to get across and then you go climbing up into the mountains. These are what you need. They're pretty slick. This is a, a MSR dromedary. Holds uh, two liters of water. Just kind of a nice extra water jug that doesn't take up much space. I always carry with me every day a pair of socks in a Ziploc. Uh, that's always kind of handy if you swamp the boots. Once a year, twice a year, I'll maybe use them, and uh, it's really nice to have. My other pair of underwear. This, uh, I don't know what uh, you calls these, Talus Hybrid. Really like these pants. They're a little bit heavy, so I don't, I'm, I'll literally go the whole month of August in sheep season wearing that one pair of pants, that, uh, that uh, Katana pant. But later season, I really like these bear hunting, moose hunting, um, when it's a little bit colder. And these knee pads, I really do like them. They don't really seem to bother me much. Um, I've worn some other pants that they have the inserted 
knee pads. I never really liked those, but I really do like these pants. Here's another wool t-shirt. So just uh, three wool t-shirts is all you need. And that's pretty much it for the pack. One thing that uh, you definitely need to have is a good system to sling your rifle. You need to be used to that when you come on your hunt. There's a few of them out there. Um, but just have used it and be familiar with it before you come on your hunt. You'd be amazed how many, how many hunters come up hunting and then I have to help them put that on their pack. And it takes them days to get that figured out and to get used to it. So this is my carry-on um, tip money. Um, tip your guide well. It's always nice. Uh, some more bug dope, I guess. Hand sanitizer they gave me at the airport. The whole uh, pandemic thing there uh, of 2020. I got some more tip money. Yeah, 10, 20 percent. Good tip for a guide, in case you're wondering. It's always appreciated. Uh, book. I always carry. Uh, Copy a New Testament with me. Um, toothbrush and stuff, which I normally have in my pack. Um, don't have it here, just I was kind of in a hurry packing up to leave. Got an RX bar, a couple of uh, so ibuprofen, hydrate and recover. Head net, bug net is an absolute must to have. Make sure I'm not missing anything here. Uh, key for my locks on the gun case. You have to have a lockable gun case, which everybody probably can guess. But other than that, flying into the U.S. with firearms is very, very simple. I bring a pillow with me. I'm getting to be an old man. This is kind of handy. Stuff's down to virtually nothing. Nice on the airplane, and I kind of like it. Um, you know, having it in my base camp wherever the airplane lands, I don't pack it with me when I'm spiking out sheep hunting or anything. Here's a lightweight down vest. I, I'm a big vest guy. I really like it keeps the core warm without extra bulk on the arms. That's uh, pretty slick. Video camera, I've, I'm working on, at this point, by the time you're watching this, I've probably got it available for you to watch. At this point, I'm gonna do, uh, I don't know, probably be a four or five part series on how I videotape all my own hunts. This is uh, one of the big things right here is just having a small video camera that you can attach to your belt. I'll get more in depth with that on the uh, video your own hunt series but I, I'd advise bringing a video camera with you here I've got my still camera in this little uh, pouch here from Stone Glacier keep that on my waist belt of my pack generally and so you can see I've got all my my small heavy expensive electronics in my carry-on and I just threw my sleeping pad in there for this one usually I pack that in my pack but like I said, I brought some meat home, so I needed to bring a little extra stuff in my uh, carry-on. So my chargers, chargers for my air-to-ground radio, uh, my video camera, my camera. In-reach, pretty handy tool to have. Most hunters anymore, they bring those. Um, I don't know what they, remember what they call these, but these are some heavy-duty, like, work or chore gloves. That's pretty nice to have or like a thin or medium weight leather glove are pretty handy to have. But other than that, the best glove that I've found are just some cotton lightweight roper gloves that you buy at a farm, farm supply. You can buy 10 of them for like 10 bucks and I'll bring a couple <coughs> pairs of those. Hey, Scout, get, get out of here. Um, binoculars, binocular case. I got a pair of Swarovskis with a range finder. I really like them, extra weight for sure. But me videotaping my hunts, another thing that's really handy is I don't want to be trying to work a video camera, binoculars, and possibly a spotting scope, and then a rangefinder. Uh, that's really handy for me to have the rangefinder built in. Here's one of the dry bags I was telling you about, roughly 30 liters. That's usually about the perfect size. I bring a ton of batteries with me. I don't bring the uh, recharging cells which I think they probably work great. Most hunters, most other guides, they use those. I just bring a lot of uh, GoPro batteries, camera batteries, and uh, camcorder batteries with me. And then usually every month or so, I'm able to get to a generator and uh, charge them all back up. 
Definitely, I would not bring a solar charger. Lots of hunters bring them. Lots of guides I've seen try them, and they seem to be more hassle than they're worth. Here's my GoPro. I use a head mount quite a bit, you know, because you can still just use the camera without the head mount. Uh, again, I'll get a lot more in depth into how I videotape my hunts in my uh, filming series. Outer ground radio, um, those are pretty handy to have. Again, you probably won't, you, you won't need this if you're going on a guided hunt, but if you're on a DIY hunt, this can be a pretty slick device, but probably not necessary, assuming you have an in-reach. So these are the type of gloves that I, I kind of prefer. Just these thin, lightweight gloves. These have little grippy tabs on them, but bring two, three pairs of these. They rip easy, but they're cheap. You can just throw them away. So tripod, super lightweight, kind of the way to go but you need something that A is going to hold your spotting scope, so depending on how heavy your spotter is, <clears throat> but also how windy it is wherever you're hunting. In the Alaska Peninsula, I use this Bogan Man Manfrotto uh, tripod that's a lot heavier than this, but this works fine in moose country where I hunt most of the time, and it works great in sheep country. It's lightweight. This is a Velbon Ultra Max M, I guess. Got a Swarovski spotter. I've got an HD because I'm filming through it a fair bit. I really like the angled eyepiece. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I would never go back to straight. And lastly, I've got a dirty, still works though, headlamp. Got to have a headlamp. Much, uh, much preferred over a uh, flashlight. So definitely bring a headlamp, batteries, um, a watch. If there's one thing that I forget almost every year, I've got about five of them. I never use them around home, um, but I get to Alaska and realize, oh, I forgot a watch. So that's a big one. Most people or a lot of people don't use those very often nowadays with our phones, but a watch is pretty handy to have in the field. So that, again, this that's pretty well wraps it up. That's everything that I brought with me. So um, I've got a gear lesson, list on my website, um, www billymolesadventures.com you'll find it all listed out there you'll ha I'll have some brand some of the models and the brands that I use um, but yeah there, there's tons of good hunting uh, brands and, and tons of great gear out there this is just stuff that I found that works for me you get good stuff you don't need very much of it that's that's the key and also other things will work. You have a, a fleece sweatshirt, I don't care if it's gray or brown or whatever, as long as the thing ain't pink or uh, uh, blaze orange, the thing's probably going to work just fine. So, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty fortunate. I get to test out some gear for some companies here, so most of it's camo. Camo is fine. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, I would probably wear more solids um, if it were just me personally, but Nothing wrong with camo, but don't think that it all has to be camo. And the reason why I bring that up, I had a hunter this year, he had some black uh, rain gear that was really good, and he was worried about you know it not being camo, and I said, ah, no, nah, just bring it, don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, bottom line is, good, get good gear, get the best you can afford, um, that, that, like that Thermarest air mattress, it's 170 bucks. Um, there's a lot of different ones now, but nice thick air mattress, get something like that it is so worth the extra money you pay for it you get good rain gear don't skimp on your rain gear your optics your boots um, those are probably the biggest ones right there and don't go buy a new rifle for one hunt bring a rifle that you're familiar with and you know how to shoot and you're not scared to shoot there are probably a lot of things that i could go off on tangents about but that's probably just uh uh, I think we'll just leave it at that. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Um, you know, obviously that's going to help me help you. So I appreciate you watching. Hope it was informative. Hope you got something out of it. And best of luck hunting.